Once again, this is um, Today with John and Helen on Plus TV Africa. Every Saturday morning, we make it a point to be with you on this show as we work our way every week towards strengthening the bonds, you know, that hold the family um, settings together in this part of the country and around the world. And our first guest this morning is around. Dolly, are you ready? I can't see you. Okay, good to have you back on the show from Ghana, Dolly. You're looking beautiful this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Helen and John. Thank you. Thanks for having me again. Thanks for coming, Dolly. All right, so let's take it from the very beginning. Now, do you feel that family pressure has an impact on a couple's ability to conceive? Like you've heard, our topic this morning is... Do you want, don't you want to have children? Don't you have, want to have children? A very sensitive, sensitive area as we always, you know, take the issues of family relationships and family cohesiveness. So the question yeah. is, do you feel family pressure has an impact on a couple's ability to conceive? Oh, yes, definitely, Helen. And um, I'll just give you, I'll just give you, and this topic, why I love it is that lots of experiences that, you know, I'll have to share with you today. Instead of bringing principles and theories, they won't make sense today. So there is this couple, let me give you an example. There's this couple, all right? They had been married for about five years and um, they, um, they didn't have children at the time. And the, the man's mom and the wife's mom, they were living in their house at the time all right so the man's mom would be attacking the lady saying oh you don't want to give us grandchildren you know just attacking her abusing her and the girl's mom would be doing the same to the man and one day you know um a family friend in fact they, their relationship was at the brink of you know breaking down yeah. you know they went through a lot from their families both families by the way so it's not just the man's family attacking the wife. It was from both sides. And just this day, they now decided that, you know what, we've had enough. They sent them both back to their husband's houses uh -huh. and, um, and they agreed. They came together to agree that, you know what, tell your people. The girl went to tell her people that she was the one who was uh, infertile. She couldn't have children. The man did the same. Wow. The man went to his own family and told them the same thing. And both families just backed off. You know when people attack you because you're not their child. Mm. But once they heard that the problem was from their own children, all the family members backed away. Nobody was attacking them anymore. And Helen and John, in six years, they gave birth to four children in six years. Wow. So that clearly shows you that sometimes when you put pressure on the couple, they tend not to have children because it's stressful. Mm. The stress you're thinking every day, today somebody will call you, oh, we're waiting for you. And I had a couple, I had a couple sometime who they were, they, they, they were married for just a year. In fact, the marriage just within that year, the mother will call the son and ask him to put the phone on speaker, on speaker so that she could talk to the wife. And she'll be saying things like, the, the hen, the hen in my poultry just laid eggs. The goat in my band just gave birth. What is your wife waiting for? When will she give us grandchildren? You know, things like this happen and put pressure on the couple that they're even disconnected. They're disconnected. They are, even their sexual, um, uh, you know, having sex becomes a problem because there is no more intimacy. There is no connection. Every day they're fighting because one family member will call you from here and say one thing and knock heads together and you can just keep fighting. So, yes, it definitely impacts on couples not having children. Now, now this is a clear case of an already fragile relationship, yes. you know, between, between the couple. Uh, how... And I'm sure there are so many couples like that who don't even know mm. how to go about mm. it. So how do you possibly, what would you possibly advise couples in such shoes, you know? Um, like, like this one took a like, very brilliant decision. They had to be brave. You know, yes, to you know, send their, their mothers away. To send their away. parents packing. Yeah. You know, how, how would you advise, you know, other already fragile couples to manage this, uh, this kind of pressure? 
Okay, um, first of all, I'll just, I, I'm not trying to be all religious on this one, okay, but I'll always refer you to Matthew 19, 5, which says, a man must leave his mother and father and I cling think. to his wife and they shall become one. Mm. The secret is achieving that oneness. If you do not understand the concept of oneness in marriage, you will find it difficult to manage pressure from family members with respect to childbearing wow. or any other external influences for that matter. Yes, certainly. All right? Yes. Dealing with family pressure is a very difficult place to be in. So you must ensure that you and your spouse are on the same page. Mm -hmm. You're in sync with each other. That's the only way it will work. It's not, it's not everybody that will come to that agreement to say, you know what? It's time to send this people packing because it's a very sensitive issue. You know, who wants to send them on packing? Mm. But the truth is, once you get to the point where you've achieved one next in marriage, where you are thinking together, you are on the same level, you are in the same team, on you are aligned with each other, mm. it's easier to yes. actually manage these relationships. Yeah. And let's not forget again that culture and tradition has a lot to do with this. Mm. Okay. It has a lot to do with this, yeah. yes. Because the truth is, um, you know, once you get married, okay, um, um, ha um, haven't you noticed that even before we get married, what you'll be hearing is, oh, God will bless you with children. Mm -hmm. your, your marriage will be fruitful. Mm -hmm. God will bless you with the fruit of the womb. You will bless, and to be honest, there is nothing wrong with those prayers. Yes. However, that already sets a tone yeah. of what to expect when these children don't come within the time frame that they've created for themselves. Yes. Yes. All right? Okay. Yes. And, yes. Go on. Are you done? Yes. And oh. in African tradition, childbearing is generally seen as a natural process of a reproductive cycle. So when that doesn't happen within that particular time frame, family members tend to come in. And unfortunately women are usually blamed for childlessness in marriage. Okay. Um, you know, you gave us an example of the first couple that took the bull by the horn and uh, <clears throat> individually decided to say, okay, I'm responsible, you know, confess yeah. that to my parents or my family members and the other spouse did the same. Um, it, it's not usually the drama that plays out in a lot of families with this kind of peculiar situation that we're talking about. So is there anything the family, you know, can do? That family that you painted for us, you know, was a family that was agitating and heating up mm. the temperature, if I can use that word, mm -hmm. of the, 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 what, what existed in the family between the husband and the wife. But yeah. apart from that, is there anything that the family can do to make life easier for the couple positively and help them achieve conception? you know, faster. Oh, yes, definitely. And it will come from us. If we don't, if the husband and the wife do not allow family members to interfere, then you will now be able to create healthy boundaries. Have limits. You know, my wife is a no-go area. You can't do this. You can't do that. Set, create healthy boundaries to help you manage in-law interferences. All right? Mm -hmm. Your wife must come first. That's why... I, I started with achieving oneness in marriage. Your wife must come first. Once you say, I do, your spouse becomes, becomes the most important person in your life after God. Mm. Never put yourself in a position where, you know, you have to choose between your wife and your mother or other relatives. Mm. Once you're able to set boundaries, it will help people a lot. And the truth is that, um, some men tend to be diplomatic in some cases or they're silent. It will not help. Once you do not put your foot down and say, you know what, this is a very, um, 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 this is a highly sensitive issue. I don't want people coming. Let me give you an example. Let me use this um, couple as an example. They have been married for over 15 years, Helen and John. And, um, you know, they didn't have children for over 16, over 15 years. And, of course, family members would call from different places. In fact, whenever they make a call, is when are you giving us grandchildren? When are we coming for Hugo? When are we doing this? When are you doing that? And the man just cut them off. The man said, if you would call me or call my wife, and all you keep saying is, when are we having, all you keep asking us is, when, um, when are we having children? Please don't call. 
for mm. over two, three years. Mm. He didn't speak to his brother. He didn't speak to his mom. He didn't speak to anyone. I'm not saying, you know, it will work for everyone, mm. but this is someone who understands that the wife comes first before any family member. Once you're in that place, once you're in that place, everything will just work together for your good. Because man and wife coming together, cleaving and becoming one, that was God's intention for marriage. So anything contrary to that will not produce a healthy relationship. So I hope the men are hearing, uh, they're listening. First, you have to protect your territory. Hmm. And your territory now is your wife. your wife. right? You protect that territory, ward off all... But you see, something I need to I would I need to you to expand on a bit. I know earlier on you talked about culture yeah. being a serious influence on this. You know, ethnicity. Yes, we know it will play some kind of a role in how different families deal with their below with their loved ones and so on. Not being able to conceive. How much of this is correct? Ethnicity. Oh, it is very key. In fact, you know it's part of culture and tradition. Some family members interfere, interfere based on the level of knowledge and uh, knowledge, wisdom and experience they have with culture and tradition. Yeah. If you if you give room for that kind of interference, some mothers will bring women from the village to your home to tell you to sleep <laughs> with them to have oh yeah yes. you know this thing we're watching uh, we've, um, heard, we've, heard, we've heard this happen a lot you know yes oh right. yes. yes it happens a lot mm -hmm. it happens a lot so it actually affects it it, it affects couples in marriages mm. you know i've seen situations where a mother came from the village brought a woman and said this is who we brought for you to marry because mm. they the, uh, 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 because the wife hadn't conceived within two years mm. meanwhile John and Helen, guess what? You know, uh, the society makes it look like women are the only ones who With have problems. fertility issues. With no. The, yes, yes. Mm. No. Yes. Men have infertility issues as well. Some, some men have low sperm count. You know, I've actually been involved in a case where um, the man bluntly refused to run the test. The woman went alone, did all her tests, and she was confirmed okay to have children. Mm -hmm. And one day, the mother-in-law came to the house and started harassing her again to give them grandchildren. Mm. And she just brought out all her medical reports and said, Mommy, these are my medical reports. Mm. I am fine to have children. Please go and speak Talk to, to your, your son. son. The woman fled up. Of course. And of the woman course, fled up. The son would have been saying that, ah, my father had... My father and oh, my grandfather like before me had family. fifty. Oh, yeah. They had fifty children. Mm. It doesn't happen in our family. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, You know, and they forget that the times. You know, a lot of things change. Yes, and um, the family, exactly. the family history is not the same from one generation to the next. Now, it's not the same anymore. Yeah. Oh, okay, Dolly. Some it's some couples. Some couples shy away from adoption. Um, we're looking for. <coughs> Um, alternatives, if I can use that word, and adoption and um, surrogacy seem to be one of it. But a lot of people, especially the men, the women might just be clamoring for, okay, let's do something that probably we take our minds off. We haven't had kids, but <clears throat> the men usually aren't um, on the same page with the women. Now, if they are not going for these two options, um, they don't want to do it because not because they don't <coughs> want to, but because of Family pressure again, you know. So if they came to you, for example, um, that you should advise them, lots of couples who have come to you, if any particular one came to you with this kind of peculiar um, situation, what would you say to them? What would be your advice? The truth is, um, when it comes to um, surrogacy, adoption, IVF, and you know things like that. It would depend solely on the individuals. So we don't really advise couples because that if you advise, if you go like for example, if a couple, if a woman comes to me and says, "Okay, we're looking at this, we're looking at that. Can I do this?" and I say, "Go and do this," mm. and she goes back home and tells the husband, it means she was she was advised to do that, and they start fighting over it. So it is important couples agree. Okay. I've seen a case where. Um, a friend of mine, she didn't have children for over 10 years, and they adopted. They had to adopt. She agreed with her husband, 
they went for an adoption, and two years later, they have their own child. Mm. So it just depends. Having children doesn't mean you must birth the children. You know, that's not God's intention. The truth is, let's check Abraham's and Sarah's um, 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 case in the Bible. No one prays to stay that long. But the most important thing is to support each other through the way. So you and your spouse must be on the same page. Support each other and let your family members see that you people are in this together. Because once they notice there is a gap, that's how they come in and they start fighting you people. They start fighting you or, or your husband. So it is very important. Surrogacy, a lot of people do surrogacy, but it's still in agreement. You know, it's something that, let me give you an example again. Like um, when, when, um, when I got married, I didn't have children for about four years. And my husband, I know that he's not the type who will be open to surrogacy and things like that. So it just depends on the person you're married to. Mm. It just depends on the person you're married to. And don't forget, again, some religions like, um, like um, um, Catholics. Mm. Catholics do not um, 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 accept, um, um, do not, um, they don't do surrogacy, um, IVF, but they accept adoption. You see, because to them, adopting a child, the child will still become yours and you take care of that child. Mm. You know, in some situations, people always tell you that <clears throat> giving birth to a child doesn't mean, you know, uh, 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 when you have a child, it doesn't mean you must birth a child before you become the person's mother because you're the one the child knows as the mm. person is growing. Mm. So you become the person's mother, you become the person's father because you're the only one the child has been seen. Mm. So it is very important to understand that it is not in anybody's... Um, position well not for me as a counselor maybe maybe fertility experts can advise couples mm -hmm. but i do not advise couples when they come with issues of fertility okay. in marriage you know even though you give them options you tell them what to do um, and, and you don't tell them what to do they still agree as a couple to do whatever it is they want to do wow dolly as always <laughs> i think you've done you've done more than justice, yes, yes. you know, to the discussion today. And we uh, really want to thank you for it. Dolly, thank you so much for opening up us, uh, all, all these important discussion uh, points for us on uh, today with John and Helen. Thank you so much. And I hope that uh, when we call you again, you'll be with us. Indeed, we also hope that new couples now feel a lot better with your insight into this intrusive question. Yeah. Don't you want to have children? Yeah, exactly. Once again, Dolly... Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Dolly. And, um, we thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Well, our next guest is um, just around the corner. Tony Ajay of the Bridge Clinic is already with us. Before we bring her on the show this morning, let's go on a quick break. We will be back before you know it. Please don't go away. <laughs> 